Hello everybody, this is part three of six part series on combinatorics and today we'll be looking at a grid walking problem. Now a grid walking problem is basically where you have a grid, let's say about this big, and so we start here, we'll call this point O, and here this will be point A. Now we want to go from A from O to A, but we can only go right or up. So one possible path would be you know go right once and then up twice, right twice, up, right three times, and then up again. That's you know one way we could travel. Um, we could go all the way right until one and then go up and then right and then up again or we could go all the way up and then all the way right and we want to know how many possible ways there are to get from O to A only using these up and rights and so we can only stop at you know where these grid lines intersect well I don't know this seems like a tough time you know there's only so many colors that we have and I don't think it would be a good use of our time to just try drawing out every single possibility you know you lose track um, so how should we handle this hmm. well Let's think about if we're just going from here to here. Well, obviously there's only one way to do it, but how do we do it? Well, we go to the right three times. And let's say we're going from here to here. There's only one way to do that, using rights and ups and that only way to do that is using two ups. So from getting from here to here, or from here to here, we use three rights and two ups. Well, let's say we had another, let's just count the number of rights and ups we use. We go right one, up one, right two, right three, up two. So that was also three rights and two ups. Well, we can notice that if we count these vertical lines, there are two of them. And if we count these, or vertical one length one segments, and if we count these horizontal segments, there are three of them. And this should make sense. If we're only going right and up, and we have to make it to this point, which on a coordinate plane would be a 3, 2, if this were our origin, 0, 0, well, So we have to use three rights in order to get on this line. And we have to use two ups in order to get on, on this line. And our point is the intersection of those two lines, which is you know a unique intersection. So therefore, any move, we have three rights and two ups in some particular order. Well, that sounds like a spelling problem. Say we had right, up, right, right, up. That corresponds to this path, and only this path. And it should make sense that we're establishing a bijection between paths. Let's say this path is U, this one, U, U, R, U, R, R. U R U R R. So the number of paths from here to here using only right and up moves is just the number of orderings of this word which has two ups and three rights. Now I'm not going to count this because we're getting off track. We had this original problem. Well, let's see. We have three, three, so this is six. 
then we're going one, two, three, four. So we have we're going six right and four up. And we saw from our from part one that in order to count this we have six plus four is ten. Choose four ways to, you know, run along this grid. And um I don't particularly feel like computing this, but you know, we'll s uh, it shouldn't be too bad. We have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. Sorry about that. Divided by 24, which is 4 factorial. And so, you know, 8, 8 and 8 cancel out in the 24, we're left with a 3, 3 and 9, we have a 3, 3 and 7 is 21, times 10, and we have 210 ways for us to do this grid walking. Now, this is definitely better than, you know, sitting here and counting all these ways to do it. Now, let's say we have a variation. Let's say we only can go, or we have to go from O to A, but along the way we have to stop at B. How can we count this? Well, um, you know, we, we can go three right, but we can't go four right here because then we'll never get to B. We'll be ahead of B. So, you know, we have to go two up, and then we're at B. Now we have to go to B to A which is just a smaller grid walking problem. And this is just a smaller grid walking problem. You go you know, like that, or whatever, but we're confined to this grid, this grid space, from O to B. And then we're confined from this grid space from B to A. So the total number of ways to make it from O to A and passing through B must be the number of ways to ca go from O to B times the number of ways to go to B to A. And I like to point out that we're using multiplication here because basically for each possible path from B to A there are you know this many ways to get from O to B, to get there in the first place. And to some people might be inclined to say, oh, it's just the number of ways to get here plus the number of ways to get here, but that is the wrong, um, that is the wrong intuition. It is multiplicative. So each of these is just a smaller grid walking problem. Here we have three and two, so five choose two, times here we also have 5 and 2, so times 5 choose 2, and this will come out to be 100. Now let's say that we just want to go through only, or no, let, let's, say, let's say B is a bad place, B, B for bad place, and we don't want to go through B. How many ways are there for us to get from O to A such that we don't pass through B on the way? Well, you notice here that this original black path I drew passes through B, so we don't want to count that. Hmm. Let's see. Well, we could go like that, or we could go like that. Hmm. But we can't pass through here. How are we going to do this? Hmm. Well, let's think about this original number, 210. This was the total number of ways for us to go from O to A. No restrictions. But here, our 100 counts the number of ways to go from O to A where we have to pass through B. So 
the number of ways to get from O to A such that we don't pass through B hmm that must be 210 minus 100 and yes that is a train passing right by my house um so because these this number of grid walkings is just no restriction but then this one we have a restriction so to count the number of ways where we can't pass through B well obviously if we have a pass that doesn't cross through B then it's not included in the number of paths that do cross through B if that makes any sense but something a path has to either pass through B or it doesn't pass through B there are only two possibilities it can't do both it can't do neither so this 210 counts both the number of paths that go through B and that don't go through B so yes we can subtract the number of paths that don't go through B or the, uh, sorry that do go through B to get the number of paths that don't go through B and this is how complementary counting complementary counting works where we take the total and in order to counter restriction we count the number of cases where the restriction doesn't happen and usually this is easier to count and then we can just subtract the two because we have an either or situation thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video